Hi, this is Dr. Eckhart with Women's Therapeutic Institute. Welcome, and thank you for coming. Um, so uh, let me just go over a couple um, facts here before starting. Uh, one out of eight women in the United States will get breast cancer, according from the Center of Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. So sometime um, during your life, uh, one out of eight women will get breast cancer, and that's the data out of 2010 from the Center for Disease Control. 62% of women in the United States will get a hysterectomy, and um, the most common cause is a fibroid or smooth muscle tumor of the uterus. And um, it's just a tumor that grows on the uterus from the smooth muscle there. Um, now, the 1997 Herman Giddings landmark study, um, which was widely recognized, showed that 15% of girls age 8 are sprouting breast buds and pubic hair, and this is known as precocious puberty. So um, most pediatricians um, kind of know about that, it's kind of mainstream information. 5% uh, of girls age 5, according to this study also, or sprouting breast buds and pubic hair. And I don't know if you've um, gone to middle school lately and looked at the girls there, but they're quite well developed. And so this is not some kind of Mickey Mouse study, but it was actually uh, um, shown and, and portrayed in Time Magazine October 30th of the year 2000. Um, they actually was a cover story. And so the question is, do you think that's normal? Well, today um, we're going to tell you all about xenoestrogens, these chemicals that mimic estrogen, and about taking progesterone, how to take it, uh, the side effects, and um, what you can do um, to become normal. So basically we're talking about how to improve your health so you can become normal. So let's start by talking about xenoestrogen. Xeno just means, like Xeno the warrior princess, Xeno just means foreign. So xenoestrogen just means foreign estrogen. They're also known as chemical estrogens, you know, chemicals that mimic estrogen. They're also known as environmental estrogens. Um, so they're estrogens that come from the environment. Normally you think of estrogen as being made by your own body, such as estradiol, estriol, or estrone. Those are natural estrogens that your body makes. But they're also um, estrogens that come in through your environment, um, through your skin, or through um, orally, through, through the water, or um, t drinking things. Um, they're also known as hormone disruptors. Um, chemicals that disrupt hormones. So um, they may block progesterone, they may mimic estrogen, they may increase the level of estrogen, um, they may block testosterone. Okay, so they're hormone disruptors. Uh, endocrine disruptors just means hormone disruptors. So in general, um, these estrogens, what, what, what's about them is they're kind of strange estrogens that they fit into the estrogen receptor and yet um, they act like estrogen but they're not estrogen. They may actually have different effects than estrogen altogether. So for instance, your own natural estradiol will actually increase sex drive, but these strange estrogens that mimic estrogen will actually decrease sex drive. And so um, these strange est estrogens can have uh, different effects um, other, other than your own estrogen. So, well, let's just talk about these, you know, what, what, what is a hormone first? And so a hormone is a chemical messenger, so it kind of tells the body what to do. So basically, imagine on the surface of the cell you have a receptor, which kind of looks like a baseball glove. And this receptor um, will kind of catch estrogen. <clears throat> Once estrogen goes into the receptor, like a ball catching into the baseball glove, it stimulates the receptor and the receptor tells the cell what to do. So here's your estradiol, which is a natural estrogen represented by this green ball. And the green ball kind of floats around in the blood and it goes into this baseball glove, estrogen receptor on the cell, and the cell dis begins to, it tells the cell to develop breasts and, and large hips. And um, that's the normal thing of what happens. Um, however, these xenoestrogens are strange estrogens, which is represented by this purple ball. They may come in through your skin or by drinking something. And they'll actually um, compete against the estradiol. So imagine that this, this purple ball will come in and um, bump the estradiol out or um, be in the baseball glove and 
stimulate the baseball glove on, on the, estrogen the estrogen receptor on the cell to do different things. And really there's a sea of, of these receptors on the surface of these cells and all cells of your body. And these xenoestrogens and, and estradiol are competing for the est estrogen receptor. So at one, imagine the sea of estrogen receptors and they're all trying to catch these baseball glo these these estradiols or these strange xenoestrogens. And it's kind of, what happens to your body is the sum total of effect um, between estradiols and these xenoestrogens. And so, um, what are these xenoestrogens? You know, what, what are they? And so let's just talk about the Platte River in Colorado. So in Colorado, um, there's a river called the Platte River, and there's a retired field biologist in 2004, his name was Woodling. And um, he was reading about um, trout in England, and it turned out that these trout in England, um, they were having intersex fish, or, or fish caught between male and female, half male, half female, below the sewage outfalls in England. And he was wondering whether the same thing was happening in the Platte River in Colorado. And so he went to the Platte River, here's the Platte River, and then there was a sewage outfall, here's the sewage outfall. And so he went above the sewage outfall and he caught some white sucker fish, dissected them, and found out that for every female, there was one male. And that's kind of the normal situation. For every female, that's one, one male. That's normal. Below the sewage outfall, he found nine females to one male, white sucker fish. And that was not normal. In addition, he found 10% hermaphrodites. And as you recall, hermaphrodites are half male, half female. And there's the hermaphrodite fish. And so basically he found that something in the sewage was feminizing the fish. So the question is, well, you know, where's the sewage coming from? Well, it's coming from your house. Okay, so what is it in your house that's causing the feminization of the fish? So there was another experiment that was done. Okay, so they took an aquarium. Okay, and they filled it full of baby trout. And they took laundry detergent off the shelf, laundry detergent, and put a little bit of laundry detergent in the aquarium. And what happened is all the baby trout grew up looking like female. All the male trout grew, grew up looking like female. So that's not good, right? How, how can that be good for you? So just recently, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, um, which is a federally funded department of the United States, um, went to go see in how bad this problem is. And um, what they found is that in all the major watersheds in the United States, there's intersex fish. There's hermaphrodites in all the major watersheds. Uh, in some places, there's a complete population collapse because all the fish are female. Um, in the Potomac River in Washington, D.C., uh, the male bass, you know, there's bass that you're, that you're uh, there's this one fish called a bass fish. Your husband might be uh, catching these fish, and goes fishing, catches bass. Um, the 42% of the male bass of the Potomac River are producing eggs. Well, that's not good. Right. And what they concluded is pesticides, herbicides, birth control pills, pharmaceuticals, and detergents are feminizing the fish. So um, these pesticides not only does it kill bugs, but also one of the effects of pesticides is to feminize the fish. And also herbicides, birth control pills, pharmaceuticals, and detergents. And so um, you might say, well, that doesn't bother me. You know, I, I, I use natural things on my skin. Um, I, I don't use any of these, these, these pesticides, herbicides in my yard. Um, I drink filtered water. Well, unfortunately, they're also natural hormone disruptors. So um, in 2006, Block, uh, who MD, who's a pediatric endocrinologist, presented up in Denver, Colorado. And um, what he found is he had um, five young boys with gynecomastia. Gynecomastia means man boobs. So these five young boys had man boobs. And what he found, he tested um, their, their blood tests. He did a blood test for their hormones. And so his, their own hormones, their endogenous hormones, the hormones that they make, the estradiol levels, testosterone levels, progesterone levels are all normal. And um, he found out after questioning the parents that the parents were giving them topical tea tree oil and lavender oil. And so he said, told the parents, stop the tea tree oil and lavender oil. Let's see what happens. Well, after three or four months later, the man boobs were gone. And so he began to suspect that tea tree oil and lavender oil actually create man boobs or estrogenic. So he took lavender tea tree oil and put it in test tubes with breast cancer cells. And he found that the lavender tea tree oil actually made the breast 
cancer cells grow faster. In addition, he put it into um, a, a cell, a cell culture that was sensitive to testosterone and found out that the um, lavender tea trail actually blocked testosterone ex expression. So um, the breast cancer cells multiplied from the tea tree oil and lavender oil and the conclusion is that they're estrogenic but also he found out that it blocked testosterone. So the conclusion of this study uh, was fairly conclusive that it mimicked estrogen and blocked testosterone. So here you have a natural compound. It might be organic. It might be um, from the health food store and this thing is estrogenic and blocks testosterone. So it's not cancerous, it's not toxic, it's not allergenic, allergenic, it is hormone disruptive. And now I think about it, um, you know, as I'm thinking about it, um, if you go to those late night infomercials, there's a breast enlargement formulas and um, that claim to enlarge um, the human breast size. And it turns out that in Europe, um, there are about 300 folk medicines um, that were used historically to enlarge the breast. 200 of them are topical. So what do you think are, are in those herbs? Well, obviously they're mimicking estrogen. Well, let's talk about another natural um, hormone disruptor. You can Google this. It's a sheep clover disease in Australia. And so um, in the 1950s, they had sheep in Australia, and they wanted to increase the protein content for, um, for the sheep to eat. And so what they did is they imported um, clover from the Mediterranean and planted it in Australia to, for the sheep to eat right in the 1950s. And what they found is that the, the sheep began to have miscarriages. And after about three years, um, there's no baby sheep at all. Okay? And they're going, well, is this clover poisonous? Well, no, it's not. Is it... Are the sheep allergic to it? No. Uh, well, is it, is it you know, uh, cancer-causing? No. What they found out is that the clover had a chemical that actually blocks progesterone. And so what you need to do is you need to have sufficient levels of progesterone so to maintain a pregnancy. So pro means for, gesterone means for gestation. So progesterone means for, for gestation. So what has to happen is you have to have a sufficient level of progesterone producing it yourself, or the progesterone cannot be blocked by, the, by, by anything. If you have a blocker, okay, that blocks progesterone to the receptor, or you have um, something that, or you have a decrease in progesterone output, then you can't carry the, 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 the baby. And so what's happening is clover, okay, was producing a chemical called formatin, which they know in formatin, which blocks progesterone. So it's similar to the morning after pill, um, that uh, you can buy from the pharmacist. It'll block progesterone and cause a miscarriage. And so basically this is how the plants fight back at animals. And so if there are too many animals and the, and the clover wants to survive, it produces this chemical that blocks progesterone and causes miscarriage. And so this is how the plants fight back at the animals. And so um, um, in the next set of slides, we'll be talking about um, how careful do you have to be and how sensitive are you um, to these chemicals. And so again, thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Eckhart. We'll see you on the next slide show presentation. Thank you very much.